five, three, two, one, action! Hi, my name is Dan Selene, and beside me is my favorite granddaughter, Jose. Together, we're going to be demonstrating some stick handling skills, and I'm also going to do a correction process. I'm a master skater and stick handler, and as long as we're stuck in isolation together, friends, I will continue to do these free videos uh, on stick handling, and in the future, I may offer some on skating that you can do at home. So let's get started. I'm going to finish tying up my skates here, and then uh, we're going to get right into it. So we're going to we're going to revisit quickly what we did in the last video, and then we're going to accelerate on uh, four other stick handling skills. We did three. Uh, this this time I have them numbered. Uh, and then we're going to do four more. So you're going to leave with uh, uh, seven stick handling skills. Okay, so let's get started. So Jose, you wait for me to cue you in. And just as a reminder to my uh, fellow hockey players, you can stick handle with a marble. Okay, you can do the paper and tape. So there's no excuses at home. And I got to remind myself to stay in a deep knee bend. This is a shallow knee bend. This is head down, this is wrong. Deep knee bend, head up, that's the golf ball. This is a ball hockey uh, uh, ball that I played 20 years with. Um, so this is a different thing. And you can actually use these big balls on different uh, rug surfaces like here. So they roll much easier if you have a, a low piled rug. And of course my favorite, and I talked about it because there's two reasons. Is the wooden ball, so it makes a tuck, 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 tuck sound. Plus, I get the seed in my peripheral, and I can hear the noise. So that being said, is let's go through the first three we did last week. Number one in my book, stick handling skills, is pop it. So I'm going to pop the puck here, and then I'm going to go to my right, which is the number two pattern. The number two pattern is in. Let's look at the colors here: green to green. So I'm stick handling green to green. I'm using two hands on my stick. The two hands are in the same position as stick handling um, during the game. And then I'm going to go to pattern number three. Pattern number three extends to the green again. So I start off from popping, I extend two to two. So this is called popping, two to two, popping, two to two. And by the way, this is the only numbering st stick handling uh, skill patterns uh, that I know of in the world. So if you uh, if you're training this on ice or off ice, you should just be able to call, call the numbers. So what's new today is number four to the right. So number four is the furthest extension using touching hands. So I'm going to go slowly without moving the ball. So my hands move from here. I'm stuck with two hands apart. Then I'm going to do two hands touching. Then I come back to popping. This is range three, range five. Both my hands are touching. I call it touch glove. So let's see what it looks like. So number one, I go past number two. Then I get to number three, touch glove. Then I come back, pop it, and then I go touch glove. And then I bring it back. Then I'm gonna go to number five, and I'm gonna touch glove. So I'm going to go by the range of three and touch glove with five. So again, let's go to four and five ranges, touch glove, bam, back, bam, back. So first range is short, second range two and three, it's a little further. Fourth range is very far touch glove with two hands. Now I'm gonna to go to the furthest range, which is gonna be six and seven. So we call these two hands. So watch, two hands I'm gonna do without the ball. Two hands, one hand, come back, two hands. Back, one hand. So we call these two to ones in the book. So here's that popping. Two to one. Bring it back. I'm gonna pop it. I'm gonna go with one hand on the bottom hand. So this is a hard one. So on the bottom hand, I reach out. 
I'm going to do that one again because I need to get into number seven. Reach out, number seven. I'm into number seven. So it's the furthest ranges. So let's just go over this again. Range one, range two, range three, range four, range five, range six, range seven. So why are these ranges important? These are neuromuscular movements. So to be scientific, I call them, each number here is a singular neuromuscular skeletal skill pattern or slash movement. So why is this important? Well, it's the same science as used in golf. And so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through briefly the golf swing and the science that's in the golf swing. And then shortly after that, I'm gonna bring my favorite granddaughter, Josie, in. So I'm gonna grab a couple golf clubs. So, in golf, we know golfers hit thousands of golf balls a day, and they even practice when they're in the fairways uh, before they hit the ball during uh, tournaments when it happens. So they're always warming up. Hockey needs to move into the same world, the same signs. So watch, I have a here, a nine iron. <clears throat> so if I had a golf ball, ironically, there's one here. So if you're a golfer and a hockey player, hey, you get to use both. So watch, so I got in hockey, or in golf, you got your head down, in hockey, heads up. So watch where my club, I'm starting off in the middle of range one, and I'm gonna bring my golf club, and I'm right, I'm about right here at the end of range two in hockey. And then of course the club comes up, and you hit the ball. So let me grab my driver. So again, same position, a little further back. So I'm going to see which, let's see what range I hit in now. So head down, I bring the golf club. There was my nine. That's not range far enough. There's where my driver is, almost at the end of range four, or somewhere in range four. So the same range as in hockey, you have to continually train on a daily basis, if not every second day. You can't break the rules of science. Repetition, repetition, repetition is important. It's important to golfers. It has to be important to hockey players. So this needs to be trained, and we'll talk about it further later on, before drills are taught. You train ranges, stick skills, singular neuromuscular skeletal skill patterns in advance of doing drills. That's just science. And we're gonna talk about the science as we move forward in these videos. So now I'm gonna bring in Jose. Five years old. She's been playing hockey for two years. I'm so impressed with her. So I'm gonna see Jose. Can you stand in front here? And can you bend your knees? And can you pop the puck? Keep the puck in between the uh, the orange uh, markers. Yeah, That's stick handle. Marker. Yeah, like that. Chalk. <laughs> I love it. I'm getting career at the point of my five-year-old granddaughter. Okay, so now. Here's where, in the book, we talk about, can you hold the ball first? So her skates, bend your knees again, Joe's. Back in here. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold the ball, bend your knees. So right now, come in a little more. So she's on, bring this leg in a touch. So here's, bring the skate in, oh, put the skate here, babe, your skate here, yeah. So she's on an inside edge, inside edge. This is very important in development. And you'll understand as we get as we go further about edge balance and what have you. So I'm getting two skills, near muscular movements here. I'm getting her stick handling where she's moving the ball back and forth. You want to do that again? Just pop it slowly and hold the ball. And then what I'm going to do is bend your knees, Jose, and I'm going to put the ball here, and I want you to reach for it. So she's in number two. So here she's starting to. If you can see, she's starting to roll. Let's go a little further. She's starting to roll on an outside edge of the skate blade. So why are we wearing skates versus running shoes? You can't do this on running shoes. You're not gonna to get to the outside edge of the skate blade. This here, this outside edge, is near muscular, skeletal, training the brain. In your running shoes, it's completely different. If you really wanna accel accelerate your stick handling skills, this is how you have to train, or this is why you have to train with your skates on, because I get two for one. And we're just gonna hold, put the ball here, Jules. Two hands in your hockey stick. So 
when she's here, she's on an outside edge, and then she comes back as she moves here to an inside edge. Then she ranges over here to an outside edge. You can do it, let's see, let's see if you can do it. Get far, catch it, bring it. Okay, now we haven't, we haven't set up for this, but um, Jules, can you grab the ball again there, please? Can you do a two to one? Yeah, I'm not even sure. We, we've been training this on the ice. Go two hands to one hand. Nice. So she's already chewed the brain and she's using the number system of popping and two to one. Two hands to one hand. All right, thanks, Jose. I'm done with you. You're uh, absolutely amazing. So this is how you can move kids along um, quickly by using this range, which is the same science as golf, and later on I'm gonna get into the science of figure skating and gymnastics, uh, and hockey, we need, we need to move in that same uh, scientific hockey science world. And so if you wanna accelerate your kids, but here's the, the irony in all this. NHL players have to train this on a regular basis, because if you don't, then you might as well tell the golf pros of the world, why are you, or ask them, I should say, why are you hitting golf balls all the time? You've already learned it. That's what I hear from coaches. Well, they should know that. No, no, no. It's a science. Repetition applies to golf, applies to figure skating, applies to gymnastics, and it has to apply to hockey. And that's why you need a plan. So NHL players need to train this, not just somebody who's five years old. She's on the, my, my granddaughter, Jose, is on the path to becoming a skilled hockey player because we are systematically, or neuromuscularly, we're going to train her. So this is uh, um, the end of this video, um, and we'll see you next time from my grads. Enjoy.